stunning in, in 3D. So what this demo um, demonstrates is a procedurally generated city. We use an L system with a couple of dozen base primitives. Um, and then we use tessellation to generate an immense amount of geometric detail. Um, on the order of about 1.3 billion polygons per second are what's being rendered here, which is really only possible with the parallel tessellation architecture that Fermi has brought to us. Um, in addition to the geometric complexity, there's a lot of lighting and rendering complexity here, actually over a thousand light sources um, and whatnot. The, uh, the richness that you see here is, is done entirely, again, through procedural tessellation. The, the base uh, implementation of this is really uh, quite simple. So we're going to fly up here to um, some statues on the top of one of these buildings. And these are, um, well, first, they're, they're quite stunning, out-of-screen stereo um, uh, statues. But these are some birds that are, that are modeled uh, with really fine detail on the wings and whatnot. But the amazing thing is if we toggle off tessellation, we can see that there's only a few polygons representing the base mesh. Um, and it's in fact with very high resolution displacement maps that we're generating about a 500 fold increase in geometric complexity. The kind of data that we're generating here is roughly on the order of 80 gigabytes per second per frame, or 80 gigabytes per second, um, which should be on the order of an order of magnitude more than PCI Express. So we really have to use the processing power of the GPU to get this level of geometric fidelity. So as we fly through the city, we, we enjoy some more of the, the scenic vistas here. Uh, one of the other things to think about is that the geometry that we're seeing here is roughly an order of magnitude more complex than a state-of-the-art video game is today. And really, tessellation is going to usher in this new level of geometric fidelity. So as you fly up to the statue here on the side of the building, again, a huge amount of detail in the statue. And again, if we look at the base mesh, the, you know, without tessellation, there's, again, only a couple dozen polygons right, used to generate the data, which creates this, this very detailed statue on the side of the building. This is the kind of capability that the Fermi architecture brings to us, and this is the kind of power that tessellation, using all of those free flops that Jensen mentioned, to do really interesting programmable things. I can almost touch it. Yeah, it's, it's the best view of all. It's pretty stunning. So from incredible geometric complexity, I thought we could maybe transition to some volumetric complexity. So let's go ahead and bring up the next demo. And what we have here is a, a couple of crash test dummies. Um, they, they might be a little familiar to some uh, NVIDIA folk. They kind of represent uh, uh, some characters at NVIDIA. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and fire up uh, one of the simulations. So what we're doing here is a volumetric simulation. This is a full 3D voxel-based simulation, basically a real-time fluid simulation of smoke. Um, and as you can see, it's a, a nice uh, rendered smoke. The, the other nice thing that we're doing here is ray marching to do the shadows. Um, in fact, the, the computation in its fullest is about a million voxels, all using CUDA. The simulation takes into account all the typical fluid dynamics simulations. Um, and you can see the, the crash disk dummy on the left there is kind of fighting it off uh, with this fan, in, imparting velocity into that fluid so, simulation. So, Tony, one of the benefits, it, it, if you didn't come across, the benefit of using physics simulation, of course, is that all of a sudden the dynamics and the characters and the gameplay environment interact with each other. It's, it's all live, it all changes. So you can fire up more or less smoke, you can change the behavior, and again, it's all real time. And the, it's impossible for an artist to have pre-captured yeah. all of this There's no effect. way, yeah, there's really no way. To do this kind of computation, while it's visually beautiful and quite stunning, is of course computationally quite expensive, as I'm sure many of you are aware. In fact, um, the simulation and the rendering that we're doing here takes about 20 trillion operations per second to do that. It actually fully utilizes the power of several Fermi GPUs to accomplish this effect. Um, roughly speaking, a billion threads per second are being executed to, to do this demo. So let's go ahead and, uh, since we've got all this horsepower, let's just uh, fog them up with the smoke machine and just fill the world full of, you know, rich, shadow, simulated, fluid simulation. Well, this happens all the time in NVIDIA. Yeah, there's, there's me spewing smoke all over Dan. <laughs> and finally, finally, Dan gives up. You can see he's, he's saying no moss there. A little, a little hard to see through all the smoke, but that's, uh, that's our fluid simulation demo. So this, that's one example of a really innovative use of computation and graphics to bring a class of, a new class of real-time graphics experience. So let's take a look at another example of simulation and graphics. Um, that's great. Yeah, it, it's okay to clap. <laughs> so what we've done here, this is actually three simulations in one. This was um, actually inspired or maybe an homage to uh, a demo that uh, uh, and some work that Ron FedQ and the folks at Stanford did a couple years ago, and in fact published a paper. Um, our simulation is, a, is an approximation of that. We actually do three different kinds of simulation here. We have a, a multi-grid, high-field fluid simulation, driving the fundamental ocean simulation and the waves that crash. 
we have about a half a million particles that do the spray and the foam. Um, and then we have a two-way coupled rigid body system that is the debris in the ocean. All of that, of course, is rendered in real time with creative lighting, dynamic shadows, the, the, the light from the lighthouse actually you know, casts light onto not just the ocean, but the particles in the spray itself. Um, and again, since this is all real time, we can manipulate it. So why don't we go ahead and um, maybe grab a boat and slosh it around in the water, or in the water, there you go. And you can see that it actually is it's coupled, so it impacts the, the flow of the water. You can put objects into the waves, it'll change the, the course of the waves. Um, this simulation, again, it's uh, fully volumetric, um, and from a you know, real-time perspective, we can pan around and look at it from different lighting angles. Um, this is the kind of thing that we would expect to see coming in next-generation real-time games, for example. It's uh, completely possible to do this, in fact, entirely on a single GPU, and in fact, that's what we're doing here. Uh, we're using a single GPU to drive the entire simulation. So this is a, a practical thing, probably in the not-too-distant future for real-time class games. Uh, again, this, to put this in comparison, um, the simulations that the, the FedQ Lighthouse demo uh, took uh, about three minutes per frame on a rack of four core opterons, and we're running this in real time in stereo, so we're about 5,000 times faster. Now, we're not doing exactly the same kind of simulation, but in terms of you know, an interesting approximation, that's, um, that's pretty good stuff. Now, these are, these are all tech demos, but in the final analysis, I mean, the algorithms you guys, you guys are using to simulate physics here is basically the same algorithms that scientists would use to, or, or engineers would use to simulate whatever physical world that they're trying to, to uh, simulate. That's exactly right. It's just, you would just crank them up to the next level of fidelity, you use more precision, you just move more particles or uh, a higher resolution grid, that kind of thing. That's exactly right. So last year, last year the smoke demo you guys did it was about 250,000 particles or something like that, and the smoke looked almost like sand floating in space, and now, the smoke looks like smoke. Looks like and smoke looks like mist. That's exactly. That's really right. terrific. Yeah. Well, your team did a great job. Great. Tony, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.